back to the Independent Investor Channel for a weekly update on on highly on holdings. Uh, while the stock market is uh, really rolling off, it's uh, uh, settling out here. I think it's uh, showing some footing. Um, I think well uh, in advance of the stock market um, uh, kind of nosediving a little bit. Uh, it's been of interest to me to monitor highly on stock. I, I monitor it <clears throat> on a daily basis. I'm actively invested in the stock. That's what's required. Uh, but I've actually been very encouraged by the stock action here. Um, I, I think that there is um, insurmountable pressure that's building behind the dam in this company. Uh, and uh, this video is going to be focused on deaf ears. Uh, I, it's great now that uh, we retail investors uh, and the like have the ability to uh, come on, uh, discuss, uh, and in some cases, I kind of look at this as fighting the system. I do. Um, I, I think this uh, stock uh, uh, prematurely ran to the moon, uh, and I think it has unfairly uh, been driven down into the basement. Uh, so where, where does that leave us now? as uh, would-be shareholders in the company. I, I think there's uh, a lot of people out there that still bash the company, um, don't really understand that at all, don't really understand how any of that bashing is in line with uh, what they are trying to meet in their vision. Um, look, if the company goes tits up and goes uh, belly up uh, and it doesn't end up making it, cer certainly, then, then there's uh, opportunity there to, uh, to criticize. Uh, but what these guys are focused on, um, on achieving with their vision of integrating into the class eight space is second to none. It's better for the planet. Uh, and their strategic goal is, is aimed at providing what they have identified to be a niche uh, in an industry that's ex expected to grow by about four and a half percent into 2025. Um, so the class eight struck, I mean, this, is, this industry is how we transport goods. Uh, the question is, is there a better way? Is there a better way? And I think since Hylion has been driven down into the basement, I, I think it has uh, released a slew of good news that has fallen on deaf ears in the market enough for me to come on and really coin and, and uh, try, to, try to capture um, what I think is, has gone on, uh, especially within the last year or 18 months in the company. I think the question uh, that is more important and prudent for investors out there that do own this company is what is going to transpire over the eight and the next 18 months. And I will be there for along this ride. This is really some of those opportunities that um, are very, very rare in stock market investing that come and they go. Um, now, rare for people out there that maybe who have not been uh, a victim of the violent downturn in the company, but identifying the opportunity that exists in the company uh, here at around $3.64 uh, driven down into the $2 range for a very, very short stint. Um, so for those people like myself who were able to accumulate shares at those levels, um, I, I uh, was um, more happy to accumulate shares in the $2 range than I was in the $18 range. Looking at a cost basis right now of around $9 a share, I'm sitting perfectly fine. As we look to achieve these uh, stupid... Um, arbitrary and quite frankly, BS price targets of $4 a share, which I believe that we, we really could at any time. Um, it's just a matter of within a week, we could, uh, we could be up above $4. And then um, these would be analysts who seem to have this stock just right licked um, are going to need to revise their BS price targets on these, on this company, because uh, this company at 527 uh, million of cash on the books with the opportunity in front of them are given zero. And I do repeat zero acknowledgement to the opportunity that they have in front of them. Um, these folks will solidify a million dollar order and the price targets won't change by one cent. It's because they wanna keep the stock price low. It's just that simple. They wanted to drive the stock price low and that's exactly what they did. And that's what typically happens with good companies like this who are just trying to gain their footing uh, in an industry that uh, is uh, difficult to penetrate in. Hylion's already done that. They're already integrated. Now all they have to do is build and they need to build this product out. And I think that there's gonna be a lot of analysts out there that quite frankly would owe a professional uh, apology to this company um, by, by, by buying into um, the um, exacerbated downturn and really just riding the momentum uh, as opposed to standing 
uh, like I did uh, and holding true on where I think the true value is in this company, um, not based on m m metrics. If I was going to do uh, traditional metrics based on uh, forecasted sales, uh, the company is worth less than $4, okay? Um, but that's not how you value a company like this, especially one that has come public through the SPAC process that needs to be provided more time to materialize their vision and to leverage that capital that they were able to raise during this SPAC process um, and, and, and come to market and make sure that they can realize their uh, strategic business plan, which uh, I believe that they absolutely will. There's no doubt. I believe that there's been some severe headwinds um, and the market doesn't see it that way, right? The market's going to, they're not going to take into consideration some of the headwind that uh, Hylion and many others in the industrial sector have encountered uh, with the supply chain issues. I'll talk about that a little bit. Uh, but I, I think anything that has been good news has fallen on deaf ears. Um, and I think what has been bad news, which has been none. Uh, so the stock has gone down on, on, on nothing, really. Um, if I was going to suggest the reason why the stock has gone down as far as it has, um, it has been based on the supply chain issues, I believe. Uh, I believe it has been a gen general investor sentiment in being caught up in a market that has been uh, in an exacerbated downturn um, and really at its peak there for a while and then it's just sold off aggressively. And, and thirdly, uh, part of a, uh, of a sector that's really just trying to find its place. And so I think the correlation with the other two players in the sector, I'd like to see highly on break, break completely free of that. <clears throat> I'd like to see Nicola, Nicola and highly on uh, trade a little bit more independently of each other. Um, I'd like to see Nicola uh, find its strength. I'd like to see its, its funding bid here. The vote uh, is looming. I'd like to see them get their funding come through. Uh, and that way it's going to solidify and provide a little bit of strength for the industry because you know, th these folks, they need time to build out these this vision. And uh, uh, I, I think in analyzing what's gone on uh, with highly on stock specifically, I think any of the good news that uh, was initially priced in on the onset and the hype um, has all died away. And, and I, I think, you know, um, if, if Agility came out and said, hey, no, seriously, we're really going to order a thousand hyper trucks, um, what would the stock do? Um, I, I, I don't know. Uh, I look at the orders that have come in as of late from Wholesome and, and, and some of the others, you know, um, NFI uh, as being much more of a positive, more realistic uh, entry into those fleets, suspecting that uh, perhaps maybe, maybe those fleet orders could uh, increase over time after the fleet validations are completed. Okay. Um, but um, I, I kind of feel a little bit of a sleight of hand with the thousand agility orders. Um, I think agility being part of the Hypertruck Innovation Council could probably solidify that order and come on and reserve their build slots. What is their, what is their uh, rationale for not doing that as of late? I mean, they were extremely bullish on Hylion two years ago. Um, are they less bullish now? Are they more bullish? Um, their silence on the line would seem to suggest that they're less bullish on the company now. And, and I believe I'm wrong on that. I do. But if I'm wrong, then step forward and put a 500 binding order on that, but put a 250 placeholder with deposits. I mean, you sit on the Highlight Hyper Truck Innovation Council, and since that initial rollout of the thighs, a thousand, which were binding and then went to non binding orders, we have heard nothing. Uh, from a big player like Agility, and I think it's unacceptable. And uh, as a shareholder, I demand more. I do. Um, but, um, you know, it's, it's been a mix of those uh, coming out of the gate with ferocity and having some of that momentum out of the gate really die and, and, and really look to, to revalue the company, I guess, here um, with a bunch of cash on the book with a promise to turn out uh, thousands of orders and they're pulling in batches of 10 orders. And I think the market is having a, a tough time pricing that in. Um, and But they're not even given full credit for the 10 orders. That's a million dollar order. And they're not even given credit for their ability to garner orders uh, in the open marketplace. That, my friends, will change. That, my friends, will change. A 10 order uh, in the class eight space for a company like this should boost the stock 30%. It's that simple. 
and it falls on deaf ears. And that's the title of this video. And I'm going to go through what I think is a lot of the, the positives about this company and momentum and, and tailwind that I think is being created here, that I think the stock market is conveniently discounting at this point. No problem. Uh, I'll continue to hold and I'll continue to um, uh, allow this company to incur what I feel like are inevitable catalysts into, especially over the next coming 18 months with fleet validation, uh, with their CARB NHTSA certification, which Cummins has promised to uh, collaborate with Hylion and allow them to uh, achieve those certifications. And if you don't think that they're gonna be involved in the uh, ACT and the ACF mandates that are coming through the pike, which uh, I think is probably um, one of the most bullish uh, signs for highly on here and nobody's talking about it. Outside the Discord group, uh, which I do try to foot stomp from a weekly basis because I'm trying to be as thorough as I can with the information that's available out there. Um, Hylion does not come out with information every day, as I feel like they're probably busy working on some of the initiatives that I'm going to disclose to you during this video. So it's imperative for retail investors to um, know where those sources of information are. I highly enjoy um, the Discord group. I'm not in there every day, but um, you know, for you guys that have more time than me, um, it is the best source of Hylion information on the earth. It is the best. Okay. Um, and that group will uh, grow and it will be emboldened once Hylion starts to realize its vision. You're going to have people trying to get into the front door and they're going to beat it down. And, uh, you know, I don't know how they're going to handle that influx and that rush of information once Hylion does explode. Um, I will defer to the officers and the administrators within the Discord group to deal with that rush, but it is, it is inevitable. Okay. And there's going to be people that make money with this opportunity that don't deserve it. Um, there's going to be people that uh, do deserve it, who have held true this entire time and just get tired of the opportunity and inadvertently sell out of the company. Um, I'm not here to talk so much about what you should and should not do with your stock. Uh, for full disclosure, I'm a, an owner in the company. I own about 43 uh, long contracts in the company. Um, being that the stock is so repressed, I've actually done away with my, my put premium and collecting on that, which I've made a fortune on um, in the meantime. You know, a lot of people will give me a hard time for investing in this company, and I just kind of cringe and I kind of laugh. And um, I, I tend to focus on myself most of the time. I don't typically focus on other people. There's a few very, very astute investors that I like to be called upon in the highly on community. Um, and those folks I tip my hat to and I respect the rest of the critics. Um, they can kiss my ass. I, I, I really don't care because I don't focus on them and I don't expect them to focus on me. Um, but the critics there that would look at my position and, and say, what well, you, you know, you've really taken it the bath and um, it, it's, it's stock investing. And uh, uh, if you'd like to try to, um, to teach me up and learn me up on the philosophy uh, of stock market investing from a retail perspective, um, I, I'd encourage you to go ahead and try, um, but you might disappoint me, okay? Because I, in turn, am disappointed a lot in the retail community who get involved with opportunities and don't have six months of patience just to wait through an opportunity. Look, guys, if this thing takes five years, no problem. That might very well be the alien application that is necessary to make this uh, opportunity come to fruition. But I can guarantee at some point down the line, people are going to regret not holding this name. They're going to regret it. There's way too much validation that are, is falling on deaf ears right now in the stock market that cannot be ignored. It just cannot. And when you invest, you invest in companies. So many people look at the $3 and $64 stock price, and it's their very rationale for entering into or not investing in a company. Well, it's come off, therefore I'm not going to invest. And they fail to do the due diligence that I and a few others out there um, dare to take on a company like this um, with the vision that they have and the addressable market that they're going after. And that's just, that's just the way it is. Um, it's great because people can either tune into me or they can not resonate or relate with my message and they can shut it off. It's no problem. Um, but the highly honors that uh, come into the community and, and they seek out my information as a consistent source of information, looking to really supplement, talk about on the fringes, what I think is going on with the company. Uh, highly on will not talk about what I talk about and that's okay too. Um, I am on an island with this information that I declare and uh, the community uh, that uh, tunes into my message uh, week over week, they do understand that. 
Uh, but falling on deaf ears, the orders are growing. It's that simple. Okay. We don't have fleets that are not interested in this product. We have um, orders that are coming in with some, uh, some uh, consistency. And we're talking about million dollar orders here. These aren't anything to shake a stick at guys. These are initial orders on the onsite to keep in perspective of companies that are taking their build slot reservations enough to introduce the Hypertruck DRX to their fleets. That is exciting. It's that simple. Okay. Now, could they take these orders of 10 and turn it out in the fleets and say, hey, thank you. This is really great. Um, um, we're, we're not going to go with your product. Ah, that's always a possibility. And I think 10 years ago, it would have been more of a possibility. But when we start to talk about where holistically the industry is moving, you need to take a pause and you really need to understand where this industry is transitioning. Okay. I think if this were 10 years ago, I think Hylion would be dead on arrival. I do, because the industry was not ready, nor was the national and state governments uh, ready to endorse the technology and the direction of the industry, the EV space specifically, enough to be confident in the technology to start to mandate and, and, and really ask for collaboration from the industry to move along uh, in a responsible manner and start to introduce these fleets uh, in an essence to transition from a fossil fuel uh, past into uh, more of kind of a, a fuel agnostic future. And I, I've talked about this idea many, many times. A lot of people come out and they say, Tesla's the winner, they're gonna win all the way. In 10 years, every single class eight truck out there is gonna be driven by a Tesla. That is not gonna happen, okay? It's, it's not gonna happen. All right. If you want to know the truth of the matter, okay, these cult followers of Tesla um, are amazing to me, and they lack a very uh, important attribute in this life, um, and that is uh, reality. Okay, if I'm going to take a diplomatic uh, approach to this and suggest maybe that optionality across all the different methods of moving uh, goods from point A to point B is going to be what wins out over time. And people will say, Hylion's not going to win. Nikola's going to win. You are the very arrogance that I speak to. Okay. I think Nikola may find its place, albeit they've had what has not been fallen on deaf ears. Nikola, no matter what they do, gets favor in the marketplace. And I say that Tongue in cheek, full well knowing that the stock price here at five and a half has fallen from grace, uh, topping out at ninety dollars a share some a uh, couple short years ago. All right, Nikola has been incredibly um, well proven over time. Um, their volumes are up. Um, they get a lot of attention in the market. They hiccup a little bit of information, and boom, the stock pops twenty percent. So where Hylion will not receive favor in the market, I believe Nikola does. I, I really do. Okay. But I think industry is ready for this transition. And I think Hylion is going to find its place in this. And the reason why I'm so bullish on Hylion and really not the others, I do own some leaps on Nikola, which is fine. Um, it's, a, it's a significantly smaller position than what I have in Hylion because I think Hylion is the best solution. So I think it has the best chance to actually penetrate this addressable market in, in a capacity that's really going to be a no-brainer for the stock when they are able to actually uh, enjoy some of this penetration that I think they'll be able to achieve. Uh, in other words, they're looking to augment existing uh, Class A tractors. And I, I, I've always thought that that was the smartest approach to this instead of reinventing the wheel. Like Nikola has reinvented a new truck and I have no... No validation whatsoever that the industry is just going to throw up their hands and say, yep, we're going to surrender the Peterbilts. We're going to surrender the Volvo Pentas. We're going to surrender these uh, international trucks, these freight liners that we've uh, grown to love for this Nikola product that is tried and true, uh, untried and true. It has not been tested and validated. It is new technology. And furthermore, it looks insanely stupid. The aesthetics of it are absolutely idiotic. Um, and I, I would 
wouldn't want to be that truck driver that pulls a Nikola truck into a truck stop, um, uh, only be a subject to get my ass kicked 10 times over by the old school folks in the, uh, in the uh, trucking industry that drive badass trucks. They're, it's badass. And you guys might be thinking, yeah, this might be a little off, Ryan, man, this is the new technology and it's the way of the future. You need to pull your head out of your ass, okay? Because if you think for a second, aesthetics don't matter, in, in, in any industry, not just trucking, you're, you're crazy. Okay. All right. If you think you can just take a trucker that's been driving a Peterbilt for 25 years and just say, Hey, we're going to go ahead and pull your card on this Peterbilt. And we're going to put you into this Nikola truck. And the experience is going to be exactly the same. Okay. Going to be exactly the same, but it's going to save us money on the, on the top line and bottom line as the company owners, but yeah, go ahead and just surrender what you've been uh, accustomed to and grown to love for this new product over here that's going to benefit us on the top line. Oh, and by the way, you're going to have to do this, 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 and this, and this, in addition to what you did prior to in your Peterbilt to help us make our bottom line. And this is just the realistic approach that I take to this opportunity. And this is where I think, you know, a lot of the Nicola people who are standing back and they're cheerleading for the company, I've... Uh, had channels that just as of late have changed their entire channel name. Um, I, I don't worship false gods. This is a stock. And so is Nikola. And I find it interesting how some of these companies have made it now their life's passion to be a cheerleader for a company. Good job. I chalk that up in one word to a pathetic category. That's where I put you. It's pathetic. Get on with your life. Find out something interesting to do, right? Go find a hole to stick your peg in, okay? Do things that are interesting in life. Go take a walk, okay? You do not need to cheerlead for a company. C come on, share the information. But I tell you what, man, it's interesting how wishy-washy some of these folks are, and I do chalk it up as just that pathetic. The orders are growing, okay? And I think it's one of those things that's fallen on deaf ears, and I guess it will consider, consider, continue to fall on deaf ears uh, until they're booking thousands uh, of orders. And it's going to be that catalyst and transition along this line over the next coming 18 months um, where it's going to tip. And the market is not going to have the luxury of ignoring the stock right now. It's being ignored, uh, but I think the, the the back pressure continues to build. And I'll be standing by, waiting to witness uh, that back back pressure break the dam. The team is growing. Um, this company is growing. Nikola has 900 employees. Hylion just has north of 200. Uh, this is a bullish uh, uh, um, uh, process for me. I've, I've monitored the positions. Um, they are filling. Uh, many of the technical positions, and this is going to help solidify and pay back value to the company over time as they look to build this team out. Uh, I don't know, this delay, this supply chain that has hurt the stock so much, is there a potential there to perhaps maybe look at this time as maybe a silver lining in this company to allow some of these things to shake out, to allow some of this validation to take place, to allow some of these certifications to kind of come to fruition? Um, I think so. I think so. And where we're quick to judge and say, look, Hylion should be making thousands of orders right now. Fine, sell the stock, go do something else with your time. Okay. If this isn't your bailiwick, Go find another investment that you can make millions of dollars with. No problem, okay? No love lost. Like I said, I pay attention to me and me alone most of the time. I don't typically pay attention to what everybody else is doing out there. But to not pay attention to the team that's growing here with Hylion and the technical positions that they're adding um, would be a fallacy in your fundamental analysis of this company uh, and their prospects going forward to how these positions uh, are going to really pay dividends down the line uh, once uh, we get into a little bit more of a conducive market. Things are just bad right now, and they're settling out, I feel. I think the worst is over. I do. And I think back half of 2022 is probably going to be very, very telling. And it's probably going to deliver results that neither you nor me can foresee at this particular juncture, me sitting in this chair delivering a highly on video and an update at this particular juncture. But we will continue to monitor. We will continue to, um, you know, uh, put focus uh, on those uh, good um, uh, um, uh, developments at the company. And uh, we're going to live to fight another day. It's just that simple. That's what we're going to do. 
Um, one of the most bullish aspects to this company that I think it's missed, and it was announced, it was snuck into the earnings call last time, it was mentioned on the earnings call prior to this one, but it is with the ACT and ACF mandates. You guys need to understand, and you know, for the few thousand people that catch this, is going to be a drop in the bucket of the uh, 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 masses of people that we could have reached. Uh, in other words, people who want, would have wanted to have just invested in a company um, that a lot of people are very, very bullish on and, and is a very under, uh, not very well known company out there and make a lot of money with. But I do what I can do month, uh, week over week to try to provide uh, some transparency to what's going on with this opportunity. And uh, I'm not going to apologize when this thing is up. I can't go back in time and give you the opportunity to invest in highly on at $3.64. I don't have that ability. What I do have the ability is to sit right now and deliver a message at 364 and tell you that there's a pretty high probability that we're going to be higher into the future than where we are right now. Okay. Put that in your pipe and smoke it. Take it for what it is. Take it for what you will. For the few thousand people that catch this, they know exactly what I'm talking about. And they'll be more financially beneficial for it, for catching the message. But the ACT, ACF mandates, this is a slam dunk for me. It's a slam dunk, okay? Now, the advanced clean truck, that is attached to the OEM, okay? The OEM mandate. So basically, in a nutshell, this is the government stepping in and saying, before you turn off... 100% of your line for the year. So for example, Peterbilt turns out, let's say 44,000 units per year, where they would have turned out 100% of those units to be diesel units. Now, a certain percentage of those units need to be turned out um, that meet certain criteria that are um, uh, focused on the uh, carbon footprint, that is focused on the initiative to lower the greenhouse gas and uh, emissions and the NOx emissions that are coming off from the class eight space. There's no secret about this, that the class eight space needs to work on this. The industry knows it. Um, they probably have and received a black eye for many, many years as being the number one polluter. And they know this and they're willing to change. They really are. I don't sense uh, uh, hesitation. I don't uh, uh, hesitate that this is not being well received by industry and good on them. Honestly, good on them. You know, they, they've been able to build reputable businesses over the last hundred years. In some cases, NFI is a 90 year old business that they've been able to grow. And I do absolutely sense that they feel like they have a sense of stewardship to the environment um, to not only pursue these ends, but uh, you know, business is business, and these businesses are not going to change unless there is a mandate to suggest that they have to. And I think these two powers are aligning uh, to be a, a very, very exciting for the industry, uh, as I would lo love to see this transition to be uh, seamless. I would like to see it be with as little hiccup as possible uh, as we transition from what has been a very, very dependable method, but a very, very dirty method of transporting our goods from point A to point B. And uh, the advanced clean truck, that's the ACT, that's the OEM mandate, Hylion is going to apply for 75% of those credits. Now, if you just heard what I effing said right there, Fleets have a chance to get this at a 75% discount. If you went into the Guess outlet or the Under Armour outlet or the Nike outlet and you found a shirt for 75% off, you would buy it irrespective of whether or not you liked the shirt or not. Seriously. Now, when it comes to big trucks and you're talking about a supplement to incentive, I've dealt with this uh, in my professional career uh, one time where the tier one, tier two, tier three emission compliant regulations were coming online. This was about five, eight years ago, something like that, uh, where a lot of companies, they got free engines, free free engines. They applied and they they got it. Um, and they were able to uh, supplement with the uh, tier two compliant uh, with the air emissions uh, technology that went into the engines. And they were able to uh, replace some of the existing machinery that they had in there. Um, so this stuff is very, very real. 
And it's very, very enticing for companies to look at their fleet and say, hold on a second, we've got to pay full price for the diesel if we're going to opt for that. We don't have the luxury of it uh, anymore of ignoring these alternative solutions out there because the incentives are so rich. And that 75% credit toward uh, the, AC, uh, the ACT, that's a big one. Okay, and I think coupled with the um, advanced clean uh, fleet, uh, which is the mandate for the companies themselves to introduce a certain percentage of their fleet to um, an alternative to diesel uh, to become less reliant on the diesel uh, fuel. I think it's great. I think they're doing it right, but it does provide some of that mandate out there and companies that are large like that, guys, um, they comply with regulations. They do. The big ones, they comply. Smaller companies, I don't know. And there's a lot of truck drivers in the fleet. And perhaps maybe you can spin me up on this a little bit um, in that if you're a one, two, three, 10 truck owner uh, fleet out there, relatively small compared to the big guys, um, is, is there that um, same level of, of adherence to state and uh, national uh, regulations when it comes to your trucking? I, I don't know the answer to that. Uh, all I can say that as I deal with big industry, a lot of the time, and they will go the nth degree not to cut corners, um, the liability that exists is just not worth it for them to take uh, any chances. I'm not saying that it doesn't happen, but for the big fleets, they know that it's not worth it. And, and in usually, and that's the strength of our, you know, uh, of our country and the companies that represent this company, especially in the class eight space. Um, a lot of these companies are top tier companies. They're publicly traded. Um, they, they answer to shareholders. They answer to a board of directors. And if this isn't coming up in conversation on how they're going to meet these mandates, um, then they are being irresponsible with their time and strategic vision of where they take each and every one of these respective companies. So the ACT, the Advanced Clean uh, Truck, and the Advanced Clean Fleet, how highly on integrates with these and the um, Advanced Clean Fleet is going to, highly on is going to qualify for 100%, one full credit uh, to those uh, mandates to the fleets. So those two coupled with each other provide kind of a groundswell of necessity for these fleets to start to play ball with some of these things, okay? So the ACT, ACF, I really wanna foot stomp how important that is and how it's fallen on deaf ears. When this news turned out, the stock should have doubled. Ryan, you still have your $24 price target. you damn right I do. you damn right, and it's conservative. Mark my words, mark my words. Trust me, I'll be sitting in my chair with my freaking uh, T-shirt on and my, I don't have any socks on, I don't wear socks to talk about finances, nor do I need a suit and tie, but I will calmly sit across from all of my YouTube audience and I will laugh my ass off. There will have people who are laughing their ass off with me and there will be um, critics of me that will be like, holy shit, we have nothing else to say to this guy because he was effing right. And I am, I'm right, I'm right. This company is right for the picking, man. All they've got to do is stay above board, keep pursuing their end, their vision methodically, uh, and we will be at those impasses and, and far beyond. I will have to revise many, many times over. Ryan, you still at that 24 price target? Oh, 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 yeah, oh, oh, yeah, oh. You keep focusing on everybody else, all right? I'll keep doing me, which is why people watch me, okay? A lot of my uh, so-called confidence in what I do also turns a lot of people off, which I find interesting because if you just sit back and watch what it is that I'm doing for people, I'm the only one doing it. I'm the only one that comes on. I don't come on and do a 12 minute highly on video because I don't think the shoe fits. Okay. That falls into the hype category. I'm not that channel in the pathetic category that comes out with a Nicola video every single day with the sheer, sheer acknowledgement to the fact that he can't come out with any other video and get any type of traction on them, that speaks to a very, very arrogant and very, very personally uh, self-fulfilling prophecy for himself to continue to come out with 20-minute highly uh, Nicola videos every single day to hype his own channel. This hurts my channel, okay? But I do it because I feel like it's the most applicable 
it's the most applicable to come on and have an open discussion, more of a podcast type of format. Some people like it, some people don't. I really don't care. I do what I do. If you like it, great. If not, no problem. Okay. I'll see you on the back end. I will be laughing no matter what. We will see. Time will only tell. All right. Next on the list that's fallen on deaf ears, the cash position. They'll continue to be able to um, execute along their uh, business plan with their cash position. This is one of those things that I do put in the bullish camp. I also monitor it very, very strictly on the bear camp as well. Um, and I think the bears do have somewhat of a perspective on this in that the burn rate of 130 million, it's pretty aggressive when you're making anemic revenue of two to 3 million a year. Okay, Hylion. So you better get on your freaking high horse and you better be aggressively pursuing these things that you know, you've got to settle out on. Okay. If the supply chain issue does not go away, what are you to, to suggest that the company is just to go tits up? Okay, without putting up a fight, you're going to have to figure out a solution to this because you cannot inevitably burn $130 million a year. You cannot continually look to pursue uh, advanced hiring and bringing on this board of directors, that of which is provided zero, nil, no benefit to the company thus far, zero. You cannot provide free stock to people and you cannot continue to enjoy these high levels of compensation and deliver results with that high of a disparity between the cash burn and the, and the top end earnings per share. You're not going to be able to do that. Okay. And you're doing it now. Okay. And this is where the bears have a field day with you. Okay. I have, I uh, cover companies that make more on the bottom line, mark micro cap companies that make more revenue that you do on the top end and you're valued at around 600 billion, okay? These are $30 million companies that make more revenue than you do, okay? That's the sheer reality. And I will further suggest that the CEO of the very company that I speak about does not even uh, earn a salary. He does not realize a salary. He only has shares in the company. And oh, by the way, he's just taken a strategic stab and bought his own company. When was the last time an upper management member of Hylion has actually bought stock in the company? I'll wait. The only reason I mention things like that, guys, is that there's two stories to every coin. And if you come on and you get a predominantly bullish thesis from me, it would absolutely be imperative of you to go out and do your own research and understand where this company is right now. Um, I think these executives should take a pay cut. I do. I don't think they should be earning money right now on public dollars that were earned via the SPAC process to turn out anemic results. And as of now, let's be real, the results are anemic, okay? We can talk all day about how those anemic results are going to transpire and, and, and really metastasize into something bigger. Um, but right now, the results are horrible. They're anemic. They are not in line with the projections that they made. And let's just tell it for what it is. They have a lot of work to do. My conviction with the company is to suggest that they will realize that. But the cash burn from now until that end is going to be something that I monitor very, very, very closely. And I would rather not see them take it all the way down to the last penny in the company before they start to provide some sort of certainty to the shareholder base, both institutions and retail, that they can self-soothe their, uh, their, uh, their, their business plan, right? That they can self-fund, that they can stand on their own. Okay, because right now they are leaning very, very heavily against a, a heavy load of funding that has been made possible by retail investors and institutional investors like myself and many others. And the clock is ticking as far as I'm concerned. So get going. The upper management, the management team and the board of directors is something I actually consider to be a bullish aspect of this company. I do. And it'll be interesting to see how this company continues to operate along their business plan, um, strategic directions, you know, Sherry Baker is the CFO, strategic direction on where the spending recommendations come from and how quickly they look to advance the company and build it up. Um, but I do look at the team that they've been able to build as being a bullish and also an aspect of the company that's fallen on deaf ears. All right. Um, the supply chain issues, I put this in the bullish camp, and I think that it is something that uh, of note that was mentioned on the last earnings call 
that I would like to hear a little bit of positive development on, okay? You can't start a company and then say, well, there's supply chain issues, therefore we can't deliver our product because that should have been foreseen before, okay? And this is where I will not give highly on a pass, okay? They need to find a solution to this and they need to find a solution to this as of yesterday, not tomorrow, yesterday. They've had all kinds of time to work on this, okay? And I, I would dare to suggest that if they cannot figure this out, in the short to medium term, they need they may need to bring in people that can, okay? And yes, that does suggest a turnover at the top because you have a publicly traded company. You cannot continue to use supply chain issues as an ongoing excuse as to why you, who are not an OEM, can, can suffer so bad in putting your solution to work when the largest components of your solution, I mean, they acquired their battery company back in 2017, took over the patent rights, Hylion owns it outright exclusively, okay? But when you start, start talking about the major components of the Hypertruck ERX, right? Meritor uh, Cummins now owns the E-Axle and Cummins owns the genset. Cummins partially owns the tank. So you look at the remainder of the products and the software that goes into this uh, technology and Hylion still cannot find the ample parts to make this solution available from a mass scale, I really hope Cummins comes in and really cleans the clock because they cannot continue to run a company if they are unable to build and supply the very product, the flagship product that they were so bullish on on the onset. They can't continue to do that, okay? The reason why I mentioned this is I believe that Hylian is working on this and they better be working on this from a sense of urgency because this is huge. They need to fix this problem and they need to fix it right now. All right. So the supply chain issues is something that I will be walking, uh, watching. Growing the addressable market. I already talked about this addressable market, trillion dollars expected to grow at four and a half percent going into the next three years, earmarking 2025 with the expected growth trajectory uh, in the class eight space. This is huge. The national and local uh, collaboration, that's the um, mandates that I spoke about with the incentives. Hylion is going to find its place in this. And it's going to be interesting to find how much penetration they find in this market. And one thing I'll just impart to you, and this is my instinct, guys, this, this is why you tune into me, hopefully, because we can talk about the nuts and bolts and, and the order book that they have and, and this and that. What I've always suggested, and I think where this is where people get the most benefit from me, is that I say things that come become end up becoming true because I find that these are going to be the very catalyst that will inevitably move the stock. What I mean by that is Hylion has a very, very uh, interesting track record of surprising with news that there would have been no way that myself the Discord group or any of the astute investors that are in this company would have been able to forecast. The reason I mention that is because is it not safe to suggest that Hylion is going to continue along that trajectory of surprising to the upside, being able to impress a company like Cummins enough to where they are collaborating with Cummins, to be able to turn out on their last earnings call a suite of hybrid customers that I had never even heard of before? These are all catalysts that get my attention. And it's not something I look at it and say, hmm, they should be doing that anyway. No, no, no. I look at it and say, you got me on that one because I cover this company intimately and Hylion still has a very interesting way of coming out and surprising to the upside. And I think we've got some big announcements on the horizon. What those are going to be, I just got done explaining to you guys how I don't know what those are going to be. But if they're going to be in line with how the stars are aligning right now for this company and what we do know, what I think we can safely presume is that what we do know can help us align some projections for what I think is going to come into the future with regard to highly on finding its place with these large companies helping them meet the OEM mandates, being an incentive for new drivers coming on, something that never gets talked about at all. I was one of the first ones to start talking about it. And then the agility rep mentioned it as a real selling point for Hylion. 
to make sure that where the example that I made of the Peterbilt driver driving for 25 years, making the transition to the Nikola truck, which is an unproven technology, a new truck, a new driving experience, take that example and carry it forward to the Hylion opportunity and say, look, it's the same Peterbilt truck. It's just quieter. And oh, by the way, it should be able to provide you the same level of range. That way you don't have to be concerned with making those stops more frequently. Your uh, rate of stops is going to remain consistent with what you had with the diesel. And oh, by the way, you can actually pull more payload with this. It's going to be more of a driver experience, a more positive driver experience for you. So all of these positive things that I think are going to come to a head, and right now they're a dull roar. They don't get talked about very much, but I think Hylion really has a lot up their sleeve. I think over the last couple of years, I have been uh, grown accustomed to their ability to remain silent on the line and give those injects of information where applicable, but also uh, some uh, real idea that Hylion is working very, very hard behind the, the scenes. And I believe that to be true now. I've been given enough insight to put me at ease to understand that that work is really being done on the back end. Otherwise, they would not provide those unknown catalysts, uh, those catalysts that I, I don't take for advantage. I'm like, I look at them and I'm like, there's an awful lot of work that goes into garnering these orders. There's a lot. Um, and to be able to announce them and, and get that, um, that assurance from the company that places those orders uh, and announce that to the marketplace, I think really does speak to the work that's going on behind the scenes with Hylion. And I'll just close the video by talking about the validation by Cummins. This is huge. The network and integration that is going to take place with Hylion and Cummins, it fell on deaf ears and stock should have doubled. Another doubling. I can go through 10 catalysts that should double the stock and it's fallen on deaf ears. Why that is, I don't know. I don't try to get all mixed up in answering why certain things in the stock market happen the way that they do. The stock market has never, ever been accused of perfection. And I think a lot of people expect perfection uh, and they question why a good company like this um, on its initial onset. I have my premonition as to why. I think it's still early. That's my summary. You guys have stayed with me for an hour into the video to understand that my premonition as to why the stock is trading at $3.60, it's because of a few of these very, very large looming issues still need to get resolved. The supply chain issue and the cash burn. Those are the two things that I'm monitoring the most closely with this company. And this company needs to tackle these head on to make sure that they can get beyond these barriers and separate and start to operate and trade in the marketplace independent of the correlation that the company has been subject to over the last couple months uh, and really years, it's been correlated with um, the EV space in general. Uh, and I think Hylion is um, it's building momentum uh, to break free. And I believe when it, once it done, does that, I think it's going to trade like you've never seen a stock trade before because I think the stars are aligning. And I think the company is setting themselves up for a huge amount of, of catalyst. I mentioned Thomas Seeley. I think he's a smart guy. I think he knows this. Um, and I think he knows that there's no real escape from just doing the right thing and doing the right thing, uh, unfortunately for stock owners, some take, sometimes takes more time than less to achieve by doing it the right way, by taking the high road, by taking an ethical approach to running the company. And I believe he does that. I sense nothing but genuine uh, in the guy. And I think he's just the guy to, um, to guide this ship uh, into the horizon and, and realize this vision uh, of what uh, Hylion is looking to achieve. Guys, I appreciate you tuning into the message. Now make sure and subscribe to the channel. If you like these updates, man, it's a niche of many niches that I put through on the channel to try to reach the masses. Let them know, uncover those opportunities that exist out there in the stock market. This is in the speculative growth category. Um, and, and I think there's no bigger opportunity right now than with highly on holdings. And uh, for the thousands of people that tune in, leave your comments, man. Leave the, Hit the thumbs up button for me to support the channel. Uh, I come on. I do this willingly. Um, I'm not uh, uh, attached to highly on at all. Um, I do this by my own free will. Uh, and I do it to try to share my perspective as a bullish shareholder with the retail community and anybody else out there that's interested in the EV space and where companies like Hylion and others are going in the space. Share the message with those folks out there. Share it across your social media uh, uh, plat platforms. The masses of the people need to get this. 
Um, and I cringe a little bit knowing that only a few thousand people get this message every week because we are sitting, mark my words, my friends, on the opportunity of a lifetime. Once these things start to come to fruition, it's going to be gangbusters. And I will, in fact, sit back off of a body of work that I've put in over the last 12 months plus on Hylion when no other voice had the courage to come on and talk about this company the way that I have and embraced this opportunity the way that I have because of what I see fundamentally going on in this company and the pressure and the momentum that I think is building and is come to, gonna come to fruition in the short to medium term in the stock market. Guys, thank you so much for tuning into the message and good luck in your investment future.